Hello everybody, it's your favorite girl Sylvia here and today I am going to be talking about Invoked Fallen. This is my deck profile that I used literally last Friday on the uh, 28th and 6-1-28-2024 and this is the deck that I used for it and I'm going to be explaining how it basically goes. I've gone two and two with the two wins, two losses, but I even won in a mirror match, so I'm definitely going to point that out of how it's good even in a mirror match with another fallen or branded player. Oh, excuse me. Anywho, let's get right on into it. First things first, we're going to have the three Ash Blossoms. Those are used to basically go and stop people from getting cards from deck to hand, special summoning from the deck, or send a card from deck to graveyard. Next, we're going to have the three Fallen of Alvazes. Those are pretty, like, known to be in the deck. Like, you got to run three no matter what. I run two Incredible Ecclesias, so that way I can do its special summon effect and then tribute it off to get a Fallen of Alvaz. In case I'm not able to get anything really out there. Plus, I still get my normal summon. That is why I do it. And so then I can get Fallen of Albaz out there. To also go and fusion summon into another monster. Using both my monster and theirs. I do Guiding Quem and Blazing Cartesia. Because they're used for doing some of the fusion summons in the deck. And so that is why they're used. They're obviously going to be used. And then one Bestial Druin Swarm, one Magnemut, and two Bestial Lubellions. The reason for the Bestial Lubellions, so I can go into these easier in case Magnema gets stopped. Either that or even just the extra Lubellion will be good for like fusion and whatnot. The thing that I would recommend, though, is to draw into them more. I would add, I would recommend to get two more Druin Swarms in, as well as maybe some Sarniers, because that'll help get those more in there, have more targets for the Lubellians. I made the mistake yesterday of not putting enough Druin Swarms and some Sarniers, because when I went into that mirror match, I got Gimmick Puppet locked, but these, are to, these two are mainly to help stop that gimmick puppet lock. That is why I recommend adding more Druin Swarms as well as some Sarniers. So that way, if they try to gimmick puppet lock you, they go first. They get gimmick puppet in the graveyard. Use the effect of the Druin Swarm or Magnema to banish that gimmick puppet. And then it pretty much gets rid of their gimmick puppet. They can't really do anything about it. So that is why I have those in there. I do one Maximus, one Fleur de Lis, and one Ecclesia for the Dogmaticas. So the fun thing for these is if this is out on the field, this can be used to help get rid of cards from your opponent's extra deck if they rely on that way too heavily. And then this is used to special summon when you got most likely Ecclesia or Maximus on the field because then you can use its other effect to Omni Negate. Right? Uh, Omni Negate a monster. And this is used to basically just be a wall. So if your opponent has more monsters, you can special summon that, and it cannot be destroyed by monster summoned from the extra deck. Next, we're going to go with Alistair the Invoked. I run three. When it comes to invoke stuff, you always want to run three Alistairs and three invocations. And once you normal summon it, you can grab a invocation from deck to hand. And then also, you can, during either play or turn, you can send this card to the graveyard, then target one fusion monster you control, and it gains a thousand attack and defense. So, I don't usually use that effect, I just use it to grab the invocation. And then we got our, uh, mainly our fusion targets, as well as one Aluber. Aluber is used to mainly get, like, branded fusion, per se. Light Hexial Fusion is to be used for any 
fusion substitute because it can substitute this card for any fusion material monster but the other fusion material monster must be the correct one you can tribute few you can tribute fusion material monsters on the field including this phase of card special summon one corresponding light fusion monster from the extra deck but i just mainly use it to get out dragoon faster because i will send fallen of albaz and the light hex Seal fusion to bring out albion albion go into banishing those two light hex Seal fusion and the uh fallen of albaz and go into dragoon and then shit all beasts can be used for a fusion target it's also good if you're able to send this card to the graveyard by card effect because then you can draw one card and then we got three branded fusions those are used to do your fusion summoning that's pretty obvious three super polys so you can super poly away your opponent's side of the field for a lot of the super poly targets that are in this deck Two invocations. I mainly run two because you don't really want to brick on it. You know, you can brick pretty easily on the invocations. It's best to only run two. So that way, because what it does is when this card is in the graveyard, you can go putting it back into your deck and bring back Alistair from the banish pile. Also, you can use Invocation to also Fusion Summon materials from your hand. So if you feel like, oh, I might not be able to get over this if I just summon this out, you can use Invocation to try and do that in case they've got a Monster Effect Negator, like Effect Veiler or Infinite Imperm. You can just use this instead to Fusion Summon from your hand and bring out a Fusion Material Monster. And if you're doing an invoked monster, you can use hand, deck, or grave, not ha not deck, the hand, graveyard, or field. So yeah, that is a good thing about that. Next, we have our field spells. I do three new frontiers and three magical meltdowns. Magical meltdowns makes it so your fusion summons can be protected because they cannot activate any card effects to stop the fusion summoning. That is what this does. If they try and activate a card effect to stop the fusion summoning, they cannot. And they cannot activate monster effects at when the card is fusion summoned as well. Meaning, if they try and activate a card right when the card is fusion summoned, they cannot. This protects it from that. It also can grab you one Alistair from deck to hand. That card, Magical Meltdown, I use a lot more than Frontier. New Frontier is just as good, though, in my opinion. I haven't used it much, but I usually try and go for a Magical Meltdown a lot more because I'm always usually trying to get my Fusion Summons off right away. That is why I activate it first. Now, New Frontier, if your opponent special summons a Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, and or Link monster, except during the damage step, you can activate one of these. Add one Fallen of Albaz, or one monster that mentions it from deck to hand, or special summon one Fallen of Albaz, or one monster that mentions it from your hand. So, New Frontier would be good for, like, when you want to get Mirror Jade out. When you use it, and they summon a, like pretty much any monster from their extra deck or ritual monster activate effect bring out fallen of albaz fallen of albaz effect on its summon discard and fuse and then go into mirror jade i run two nadir servants because i believe it's still limited to two uh i don't do three though because you don't want to brick yourself on that either because it stops you from special summoning from the extra deck I always use it when I'm about to conclude my turn or go before I go into battle phase. Because then I can send one monster from the extra deck to the graveyard, then add one Dogmatica monster or Fallen of Albaz from deck to hand. And for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. So I do that basically after I've already done all my fusion summoning. 
Fusion Deployment. That is used for when you want to get, say, a Fallen of Albaz or Alistair out. And it can be used to grab that because you reveal one of your special some one of your fusion monsters that mentions it specifically. Like it has to specifically mention it. So like for instance, Albion specifically mentions Fallen of Albaz, brings it out. You have to specific it has to specifically mention it. You can't just do a monster with twenty five hundred or more attack like with Titanoclid or anything like that. And then I run the one of terraforming. Yet that's so if I don't draw into magical meltdown or new frontier, I have a way to get them still. One of Harpy's Feather Duster. That's pretty explanatory because I'll, that way I can clear off their side of the board. One brand of beast and two brand of regains. The brand of regains is so when they decide to banish one of them. I can still hopefully get another through Lubellion's effect. Brand of Beast is to help basically go and do the whole popping. So yeah, and then if a light or dark monster gets banished, Brand of Regain will activate, putting that monster to the bottom of my deck, and then I draw one card. Or if my opponent decides to do that too, I can put it to the bottom of their deck and still draw one card. And then I run up two of Dimensional Barriers. Those are for mirror matches. So. If, like, they're for mirror matches as well as a lot of other matches, unless the opponent is mainly running a Link deck, then these will be able to stop XYZs, Ritual, Fusion, Synchros, or even Pendulums. So if they're, these are good for quite a lot of decks. For instance, you go into, like, fighting a Pirelli deck. That's a lot of XYZ summoning. You can use the barrier to completely stop it. Same thing with most mirror matches. You can use this to stop them from doing their fusion summoning. So on and so forth. Anywho, we're going to get to the extra deck. We do two invoked Macabas as well as one invoked Agadis. Agoides, or however it's pronounced. Macaba is pretty much a nominee negate as long as you have the same type of card in your hand to discard. Because... You have to quick effect, send the same type of card, monster spell, and or trap from hand to the graveyard to negate the activation. And if you do, banish that card. This card is used for quite a bit too. Say you've got Makaba in the graveyard. You can use him to go and basically pop one monster on its summon. And then you can use its second effect, even during the battle phase, I believe. Uh, once per turn, yeah. You can banish one fusion monster, and this card gains attack equal to that monster's attack. So, 2,500 and plus 2,000, that's 4,500 right there. So, yeah, that's why I like using it, as well as its effect is on summon, meaning you can pop the monster, meaning they cannot do anything to negate that effect because if Magical Meltdown is on the field, you still get this effect to go through, and they cannot respond to it because it is still during the fusion summon. It is on its summon, basically. And then I run one of Dragoon. Dragoon, like I said earlier, Light Hexial Fusion, Fallen of Alvaz, go into it. It is an Omni Negate. You discard one card, basically, from your hand, and negate and destroy the card, and then it'll gain a 1,000 attack. And it cannot be destroyed by card effects as well. It cannot be destroyed, and neither player can target this card with card effects. Run the one of Grangadul, the Dusk Dragon. That's for the Blazing Cartesia Fusion. I haven't used it too much, so I can't really tell you all about this card. But that is for if I ever draw into the one of Blazing Cartesia that I do. So <laughs> I can't really say much about it. If you want to know what it does... You can also go and look up the card effect. I can even show it right here. Mostly. There you are. You can pause the video right now and read the card effect. So you can see what all it does. But I don't use it too much. The main stuff that I do use though. I run two Albions. Those are for like the discarding. As well as if I need to go into Mirror Jade. Uh, and go into... Say, uh, 
Dragoon. As well as there's ti the one of Titanoclid. That's used for the discard as well. Or even if I want a Super Poly. And, or Fallen of Albaz Super Poly effect, basically. Lubellion. That's for shuffling back the monsters. And then probably going into another Fusion monster. So yeah. The one of Mirror Jade. That's for the non-target banishing. As well as if this card leaves the field like by a by an opponent's card meaning no matter what if my opponent decides to destroy it by battle card effect or get rid of it in any way shape or form this will destroy all their special summon monsters correct yep uh oh no it's destroy all monsters my opponent controls and that's during the end phase Predator Plan, Drago Stilepia. That's used for an Omni Negate because when you summon it, you can target one card, place a Predator Plan counter on it, and negate its effects. Like, pretty much permanent negate it. <laughs> and, let's see here. And if it is level 2 or higher, it becomes level 1. As long as it has a Predator counter, negate the activated effects of your opponent's monsters that have Predator counters. So... It just gains that counter and does not lose it, basically. Next is Alva Linetius, the Abyss Dragon. That is my contact fuse who's target. So if my opponent is playing, like, say, Red Dragon Archfiend, or even, like, another type of dragon deck that summons a bunch of dragons, I just need to normal summon Fallen of Albaz, say no effect. All they can do is activate an effect that could destroy Fallen of Albaz, but they really can't do nothing about it if I say no effect. And it throws them through the loop because then I go contact fuse and they cannot do anything to the contact fuse. Because I'm contact fusing and I don't need to use polymerization or anything. And then this card gains that many more attacks per material used to fusion summon it. So if I, like even yesterday... When I had one Fallen of Alvaz and this dude had four dragons on the field, I contact Fuse, and this would have been able to attack five times. And that would have been game, because it has 2,500 attack. Do that five times, game over. Next, we have Starving Venom, Fusion Dragon, and Garura. These are the main Super Poly targets. They are what I use for my Super Poly targets, and what people can, like use as well. Garura will allow me to draw one card when it leaves the field. And Starving Venom Fusion Dragon destroys all the uh it destroys all the special summon monsters. Right. Yeah. When it go leaves the field and goes to graveyard. It destroys all my opponent's special summon monsters. As well as if this card is fusion summon, you can make this card gain attack equal to one of your opponent's special summon monsters until the end of the turn. So you can even make a gain attack as well. And then we've got Despian Lulu Wraith. Lulu Walilith. I mean, this card I haven't used too much because it's not super duper simple to summon. I'm sure there is a super simple way because I have read about Guardian Quem's way of possibly being able to summon it. But that's a bit more harder to do still. I also see it as more of like a type of card that you can just discard as well. Because if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can special summon one light spellcaster monster from your hand or deck. Whose attack equal to its own defense. So you can literally go with a lot of cards. Like for instance. Pretty much almost like a lot of Dogmatica. It's like Dogmatica Ecclesia. Uh, Fleur de Lis. And I believe Blazing Cartesia. And Guiding Quem. So it would be good for if you just send it to the graveyard, basically. And for the side deck stuff, 
I mainly just use, like, say, Invoked Kaliga in case my opponent is doing a lot of, like, dark fusions, dark monster summoning. And then it will base, or if they are using a bunch of effects, like monster effects, or if they're doing a lot of attacks. This card makes it to where each player can only attempt to activate one monster effect per turn. And each player can only attack with one monster during each battle phase. So that ain't super duper bad in case you're like, oh, I need to side this in because my opponent keeps on attacking me a bunch of times and whatnot. Like, for instance, Spirit of Ubels and doing like the Ubel decks. You can bring this card out. They can only attack with one of them. And so they, if they attack with one of them, they have 0-0 zero, zero attack. The main thing that's making them win is if they attack into it. And then they do quite a lot of monster effects as well, too. So this can stop them for a good bit. While you can still keep on going with, like, Brain Infusions and whatnot and getting out strong monsters. And then I have a third Nadir Servant in there in case I really need it. And I run one of Cosmic Cyclones. I have two tokens. Two Draw and Lock Birds. One Evenly Matched. Three Effect Veilers. And a third D Barrier in case I need it. And Wing of Dragon Ross Sphere Mode. If you notice, I basically went taking a bunch of uh, stuff from basically my Thunder Dragon Dragon Link deck. The reason being is because... I went moving it to another deck box, and I was like, you know what? It ain't a bad side deck to have against most decks. Can use the same side deck, basically. But yeah, that is the Invoked Fallen deck profile to show you all. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to drop a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! It goes on and on and on.